Spoiler warning. The following discussion will contain spoilers. We recommend checking out the movie first, then coming back to hang with us. But, if you don't care about that, glad to have you here. Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Real Review. My name is Kevin. And I'm John. And we are your real movie guys. It's March, so that can only mean one thing. Real March Madness. It's a tale as old as time, Pixar vs. Disney. In a brawl to end it all, we have selected 8 films from each studio. A total of 16 movies will battle head-to-head for superiority. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Disney's classic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Exiled into the dangerous forest by her wicked stepmother, a princess is rescued by seven dwarf miners who make her part of their household. John, this is the first attempt by Disney Animation Studios to make a full-length animated movie. Uh, We just talked about Toy Story, which was the first CGI animated film. Now we're going even further back into the 30s. This is really old when you really think about it. This was Disney's first foray, and arguably it did a lot of really good things for the genre. When you think about when this movie was first released, people were calling this like Disney's folly. They thought that this was going to bankrupt the Disney company in general. So they all were going into it thinking, oh, this is going to be terrible. Nobody could ever watch this. Like children couldn't concentrate on the color scheme for so mm-hmm. long. Right. But and after were after they watched it, they were all so blown away by not just the story, but the amazing color palettes of each hand drawn animated scene. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's what gets me into it too. The colors pop. Right. I agree. Let's just jump into it then, because I have some things we should talk about, especially with the the design work. As a first attempt, this is a landmark film in animation. There's no way someone could come and tell me that this is not an incredible achievement to be made in 1937. Regardless of how you feel about the story, about anything else, the artwork is beautiful. The colors are beautiful. Everything as far as animation is an incredible accomplishment, especially in this long format where it's never been done before to tell a continuous story like this. Everything actually works. Uh, the line work is incredibly detailed at times. Uh, when you look at like the the seven doors, when we go to their house and we see some of the incredible line work and the furniture, uh, th- stuff of that nature, it's so detailed. It really is. It, it feels like when I watch Snow White that I've stepped into an oil painting, right? I feel like especially the colors, everything pops, everything fits in this universe. Nothing feels out of place. Now, is there some jank here and there with the animation? Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's to be expected, especially when you see a lot of the animal characters. It's where they overlay an image. For example, you'll have, like, two birds sitting next to each other, right? And they'll be doing the same exact animation, but it's mirrored. So, like, one's doing it to the other. There's a lot of that recycling. You can't blame Disney. I, I don't blame them. You know, there, there weren't that many. There were a lot of animators, but, again, this is the first time they attempted something so big. So you can't fault it for that. But, again, the, the work in this movie is just plain beautiful. Well, yeah, and also the fact that they were using the full first multi-plane camera system too, mm-hmm. which I feel like added so much to it. Right. So much depth and everything to it that it was done so good. You can tell the animators honestly had a really good time with this movie. And there's a couple specific things I think that stand out to me. The first being the seven dwarfs themselves, right? All of them stand out. They all have fantastic little animations that make them unique. <laughs> Even without dialogue, you can tell who these characters are just by looking at them and how they react. And that's, that's a lost art, which I think we'll get into a little bit later. But all the seven dwarfs really work. They're all iconic in the way they look. 
some are more standout than others. I know Grumpy and Dopey are, of course, the two like standout favorite dwarves. My favorite character in this whole movie, and it shouldn't be a real surprise, the evil queen steals the show. From the second this movie really gets going and we have the whole magic mirror on the wall. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Which, funny enough, John, did you know that it was magic mirror on the wall? Or did you think it was mirror mirror on the wall? I thought it was mirror mirror on the wall. It's magic mirror on the wall. That's a common misconception that everyone makes where they, everyone believes it's mirror mirror on the wall. Never was said like that. It was always magic mirror on the wall. It's part of that whole like Bernstein, Bernstein bears conversation that people have where we remember things differently. And that's always one of the most famously misquoted lines. It's actually magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? When that scene hits, all right, there's a couple things we have to unpack here with that. First off, the face in the mirror is nightmares, right? <laughs> with the way he moves his face when he speaks his dialogue, it's so dark and menacing. But th- not even that, just the way they animate his face. Like, everything's over-exaggerated, the way he's talking. Famed is thy beauty, majesty. But hold, a lovely maid I see. Rags cannot hide her gentle grace. Alas, she is more fair than thee. And you have the smoke coming up from the background and and the the muted color palette. Some creepy stuff. And then you see the queen, and they're just having a grand old time with that character. Like, she's over-enunciating everything and being super dramatic in all her hand movements and her facial features. You could tell they just had a lot of, lot of fun with with that character in particular. And then she turns into the old woman. Look! My hands! My voice! My voice! <laughs> oh, perfect disguise! <laughs> and they just. That, that's nightmares. I'm sorry. There, there's no way you're not having nightmares seeing that old lady. The scene where she's giving like the explanation of her plan, and they zo- they do this shot where they like zoom into her eyes, and everything else fades away except her friggin' eyeballs, where one's like wide open and one's like a little bit smaller and slightly open. Nightmares, man. Nightmares for years. Still, still bothers me. It's still weird too. Just watching it back too, like, when she's having Snow White take a bite of the apple, mm-hmm. she's trying to like take over her with like some kind of powers, like eat this app it's uncomfortable and oh, like whoa and i think that adds to something with this movie which a lot of people i don't know if they're afraid to talk about or it's not something we see in modern disney this movie's overall beautifully dark this is a dark movie i don't care what you have to say about this they talk about ripping people's the, the queen literally asked the huntsman to rip out snow white's heart and put it in a box and give it to her to make doubly sure you do not fail. Bring back her heart in this. They talk about burying Snow White. Oh, I'm going to put her to sleep, and then the dwarves are going to bury her alive while she's sleeping because <laughs> they think she's dead. The dwarves will think she's dead. She'll be buried alive. You watch this for the first time. Is that Disney, this first Disney movie, the same as the Disney we have now? You can't have that kind of stuff in this in present Disney. It's so ironic that the, the original Disney, the original like imagination and story, they weren't afraid to go dark and tell this story. Compared to now's Disney, who's so soft and afraid of everything, they're afraid to offend anyone or tell even a slightly dark story. It's so polarizing to see the two differences in them. Well, I think that's the big difference between when disney was run by walt Mm -hmm. himself like the storytelling that he wanted to do with some of his things were darker than most people would think about it right but he knew how much of a success it would be and now it's just they're afraid to take some of those risks i'm not saying that every disney movie has to have this dark narrative of violence and murder and all that but it's okay to lean into the darker movies i feel like especially in our culture we tend to remember the movies that tread on the dark side a little bit. I think they leave more of an impression for us. 
Because sometimes you can't have love without fear. You need to have that element. This, in order for a movie, or especially a protagonist, to truly overcome something, they have to overcome something that truly frightens them. That way you can remember it and relate to it. And the imagery that they use is fantastic. Again, that dark imagery, I, it stays with you. The poison apple where it gets the coating of the skull that sticks with you against the shiny redness of the apple. And even when the queen dies as the old woman at the end of the movie, gets struck by lightning and she falls and it's like this, this wicked death. <laughs> you remember that that never leaves you again. Not every Disney movie has to go this path, but I think there's something to be said when we lean into the more darker theming. I also think that there's something to be said that how a lot of these movies, if there is a good antagonist in the movie, mm -hmm. like who does their job really well, yeah, it makes the movie so much better. That's been my argument for years. I think in, in order to have a good hero, you have to have a better villain without a good villain. You can't have a, as an interesting hero because heroes I feel like can only be interesting to a certain degree. The, the villain can be as interesting as you want to be. You can go as crazy as you want. There, there really is no limit to how evil you can make someone. I really think that this movie captures that. And again, there's some other conversation I want to have a little bit about the actual Snow White character, but we'll, we'll talk about that later on. Something we have to admire with this movie. And I think it's a lost art today. And I kind of hinted at a bit, a little bit earlier where this movie tells a story with barely any dialogue watching snow white again after you know so many years of seeing it and whatnot it's interesting to see how little dialogue there really is in this movie a lot of the movie is just told through animation and music those two things really carry this whole movie now you can make the argument where the animators didn't want to deal with the whole limp syncing and trying to deal with the dubbing and all that which i think was part of it Right, John, I think you could agree with that. That's that's a task in itself, especially to have to do such dubbing work and writing dialogue. The animators are, are good at their craft at one thing. They're amazing at animating. So that's how they chose to tell the story. So throughout most of the story, we're really just given actions and that carries along the movie. I think this is an art that every animated movie in some respect should come back and just take notes on. Tell a story without as much dialogue. Like, tell me the story through action. That is where the beauty of animation lies versus something such as live action. Animation can go further using its own art form. You don't need the dialogue to tell me the background of a character or how a character's feeling. Show me how that character is feeling. Animation doesn't have the limits that live action does. That Again, this movie truly, if anything, it excels at that. The songs in this movie are something that need to be talked about where Hi Ho is a classic. Off to work we go. That's iconic. That that's iconic Disney. As soon as you hear the first rift of that song. Hi ho. Hi ho. Hi ho. You know what you're listening to. It's still a fun, remarkable song. Also, the uh, someday my prince will come. classic song as well the other songs are you know i think they're decent but those two for me i think are the standout songs they're just they're beautifully crafted and the score in general on this movie i think i really just enjoyed just from the darker tone creep factor going on when something's happening it just reeks of classic disney of that classic era of music using a symphony like that just really brings the characters even more to life in this setting have a bite So let's go into some negatives. I have a couple things that I think need to be addressed. This movie can be very, very slow at times. Now, I would make the argument, John, I don't know how you feel about this, is sometimes I wonder if this was truly the right story to adapt. A lot of the, the animation in this movie, while everything is fantastic as far as animation, right? We, we agree on that, I would think. We agree on that. Everything looks beautiful. The character work, 
everything looks fantastic. Some of it feels like we're just doing it to either fill time or to prove that we can do it. How much does it actually contribute to the actual story as we're really looking at this? As far as a movie standpoint, I'm not talking about a feat in animation or anything like that. As far as a story standpoint, how much does these interactions truly add to the story, especially when there are long segments of things. A lot of it having to do with the seven dwarfs encounters, you can feel like almost every scene with them is artificially inflated to an extent. And you know, it's funny that I've heard people say that too, like mm -hmm. where they kind of just trying to boast about all those, all the things that they were able to do. Right. And kind of like throw all those things in there to be like, Hey, we could do this. Yeah. Could, you see what's going to come next after that. And it's impressive. I, I can see that too. But I also feel like that it does have its purpose. But I feel like, yeah, you're right. It could have been mm -hmm. like cut down some. It's one of those things, like I said, it's, is this the right story? And should we have told this story? Was this the right choice for the first Disney theatrical film? I mean, would you argue maybe Mickey a Mickey Mouse centric story would have been something a little bit better to try and carry? It's tough. Because, I mean, I've always seen people make that argument too, where... Why wasn't Mickey Mouse the first movie for Disney? He was their mascot. He was their character. How come he wasn't the first like feature character? Why hasn't he really had his own like true theatrical going as far as a character? I don't know if like a Mickey Mouse movie would have done, would have been able to capture so much that like this does because this is like more of like a story, you know? It is a story. I mean, you can make up a like fault. a whole story. You make up a whole story like with Mickey Mouse. I think this was easier for... They had a guide made for them, essentially, to how they could tell a story. This is the right type of story to adapt. Whether or not it was the right story, I think is there's a question to be made. No, yeah, definitely. Like, they they could have picked another one, but I feel like the fact that they picked this one and this was chosen... Yeah. They did it a good job they with did. it. I agree. I agree. It just, like I said, just a little bit of issues with maybe some of the the length and just the, the choices of, you know, maybe again, if you're going to make a full theatrical movie, I could argue, I don't know if this was the right one to truly adapt. No. Yeah. Definitely. I can see where mm -hmm. you're talking about like the slow points to it too. Yeah. Like, and it hurts it. I think the pacing is overall hurt by this movie and not to say, you know, I, I can enjoy animation as much as the next guy or the next child for that matter. I try to look at everything that way. And it really bogs down the pacing. Like you really feel it at times. This movie's just really slow. And you're waiting for that next big, like exciting moment. Like I said, when the evil queen would pop on and she was being creepy and she was trying to plot against what to do against Snow White, that got me interested. And then we go back to Snow White and that kind of adds to the whole Snow White character. She's kind of boring. I hate to be that way, but she's not really that interesting of a character in herself. Just a girl that's perfect in every way is how interesting is that, right? And it's yeah. like the argument we had before where we were saying the you have to have a really interesting antagonist to even give your protagonist a chance at times. I think this is one of the strongest cases for that, where the queen's so very interesting in what she's doing, and Snow White's kind of just like, I'm here. Last thing I want to talk about, and again, this could be a taste thing, I don't like the start of this movie with the storybook opening and telling the story right away from the chapters. Once upon a time, there was a princess. Okay, I get it. All right, I get what you're going for. You're going for a fairy tale motif. Disney loves to use this. I'm trying to think of, I think this was like a, a very much a standard thing in their animation for a while, right? Where they would open a movie with a storybook. Coming to mind right away, I know Jungle Book was one of them where they, they have the storybook and it opens and it starts the story. And I can forgive that to an extent at first. I'm like, all right, well, whatever. You know, you're starting off the movie. You have a cute little theme. Then I feel like this movie makes a grand mistake. Towards the end, right before we see, you know, the whole famous Sleeping Beauty scene, she's, she's going to wake up and be kissed by the prince. We have a chapter, like, interruption by the movie. And for some reason, I don't remember that as much as a kid, where after the queen dies, we have a set of dia like dialogue on a page that tells you what happened. It's like a time jump, like randomly in Snow White. And it just throws the movie off for me at that point. Like, I really didn't need that interlude in between. I feel like Disney was just like, oh, well, we have to explain exactly what they did. Like, why is there suddenly like a glass coffin with the dwarfs surrounding it? What's the prince been doing? 
I feel like he just threw in an interruption to say, all right, this, this is what was going on. So no one feels lost. That always bothers me. And that really, again, there's pacing issues throughout this movie because of how slow it feels. But when you get to that, it's like, okay, we got to wrap this up, guys. Let's throw that in there. All right, we're at the end. All right, bye. And then she, they, she wakes up. She's like, okay, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. I feel like what you're saying is too, the problem you have with so many movies, not just like this one or animated ones in right. particular, but movies that take their audience as they're dumb or something and they don't respect your intelligence. That, like, and I always it, wonder too, if it's a budget issue, because they're like, all right, uh, we're, we have a little bit of a problem here. We don't know how to get from the queen dying to putting Snow White in a glass coffin <laughs> and do that convincingly through animation. All right, all right, just, just, put, just put some dialogue in there. Jump to the end. That, that's what it feels like to me. Again, I could be off on that, you know, I who's to say you spent all this time with the other characters showing these funny animations but you couldn't just have some kind of like little interaction like a little montage of just like things that happened up until there you could have shown the prince like going in the woods looking for snow white or you could have had the dwarves like building the coffin or just putting some pieces together like there's other things you could have done to get that point across and for a movie where i i praise it so highly for showing and not telling the audience this was the biggest like snafu I think they could have made in this movie. And especially at the end of the movie where you're ready for that magical moment. Cause you know, what's going to happen. Obviously it's no, it's no mystery. Like even the witches, like when she's going through her book, which I always crack up like, Oh wait, I better go check the, the fine print here and see what's going on. And then she goes to the book and she's like, Oh, if it gets wakened by a prince, ah, she like, because no, nah, never mind. That'll never happen. Of sleeping death can be revived. Only by love's first kiss. Love's first kiss. <laughs> no fear of that. Obviously, that's going to happen. But again, I just, a little more tact from Disney would have been appreciated on that front from me. I think we're at that point, though. We're going to give our final scores. I'm going to give Disney Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs a B. Snow White lies dead in the fog. The huntsman has brought me proof. Behold her heart. It's a fantastic movie. It's a landmark film. My only argument against it and why I put it, I think, in the B-plus range is really, is this a story that should have been told as the first animated movie? I severely question that. I think there's other fairy tales, other more interesting stories that they could have told, especially from like their latter films, maybe would have been more interesting to do. Is it an achievement? Of course it is. You're ridiculous to say it's not. The animation's beautiful. The characters are memorable for what they are. The story has issues. It's not the best Disney movie ever made. I don't think many people do truly believe that in a lot of instances. Again, being the first doesn't automatically make you the best, but it sure as hell lands you in the history books. John, where do you stand with this film? I actually give this film also a B+. Plus. Angel, <laughs> she's a female, and all females is poison. They're full of wicked wiles. For the simple fact of, if you compare it with a whole bunch of other movies, mm -hmm. it's not like the cream of the crop, but this movie does so much. Right. Especially for the time frame that it came out in. And it just does so beautifully done. And the story's a decent story. I feel like this movie is just one of those definitely movies that people need to watch and that even if you haven't watched it in a while you should give it a try again yeah. because i feel like you'll see different things and you'll come to appreciate the work that actually went into this movie yeah. so much more and that's what i think ultimately falls upon this movie is the maybe the work behind it is somewhat more interesting than the actual movie just the whole conception and putting this idea together and making this film a reality could be slightly more interesting than the actual movie that was made I think it's going to be interesting when we get towards the end of the week, make sure you guys come back and check us out. We're going to have that, that, that fight that we've been promising. It's going to be our first Pixar and Disney conflict here. Who did it better? Did toy Story as the first CGI movie do it better. Did Disney do it better with snow white? It's going to be interesting. I can't wait for you guys to check that out. John, Definitely. where can the people find us at home? You can find us over on YouTube. You can check out all of our stuff over there at the real movie guys. We're at the real movie guys on YouTube. You can find us over there. Tell us what you liked about this movie. What other movies that you like. What are you looking forward to in our series to come? Which one do you think 
What did you want? Do you think is going to end up to be the top in the back bracket? You can also let us know over on Twitter at the real movie guys on Twitter. Um, let us know over there what you like, what you thought. Did we miss out any movies that may be your favorites or not? And you can also listen to us on many podcasting platforms such as. Yes, for your listening pleasure, we are also available in podcast form at iTunes, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcast, Overcast, Breaker, Radio Public, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to give us a listen at any of those fine places. If you already are right now, hey, greatly appreciate it. Just search at Real Movie Guys. We should pop right up. Thank you again all so much for joining us for this episode of The Real Review. My name's Kevin. That guy over there, he's John. We are your real movie guys. Real guys, real movies, real thoughts. The battle rages on as real March Madness Disney versus Pixar continues. We'll catch you next time.